Today, let's talk a little bit about niche and avatar. Now, this is one of those things that people really tend to kind of not want to do because it's kind of the hard work. You're digging in deep. But determining who your niche and avatar, who what your niche is and who your avatar is, they're two different things, is going to make creating your content and an offer that they will love that much easier. Hey, I am Tracy from LaunchTechMadeEasy.com, and I love helping people with all things launching, particularly through my five-week Get Launched Boot Camp, where we complete all of your launch tasks in just five weeks. You can find out more information at my website, LaunchTechMadeEasy.com. So let's talk first about niche or niche, depending on where you might be in the country. Your niche is the market that you're in, the the topic of what you're doing, I guess is probably a better way to put it. So let's say your niche is gardening. You have a course or a membership or a program all about gardening. Well, that can mean a lot of different things. There's a lot of different types of gardens. Maybe, maybe you want to talk to people about vegetable gardens, or maybe people have flower gardens. Maybe they have big gardens or little gardens, or maybe they're in the northern part of the country or maybe the southern part of the country. So you need to niche down a little bit because you can't talk to all of those people in exactly the same way. Pretty hard to talk to someone in the north about the growing season in January when their garden is underneath several feet of snow, right? So let's niche down a little bit. Let's say we're going to talk to people who have a small garden they like to have small gardens and they're in the northern climate and then we're going to niche down a little bit more and we're going to come up with a product for them that they can grow in the winter so if they're in a northern climate and they're in and it's and they want to grow something in the winter they're probably going to have to do it indoors right so then maybe your your niche becomes microgreens because that's something you can create indoors so that's what niching down means so your niche becomes growing microgreens then we look at avatar your avatar is the person within that niche that you want to market your product to so in the microgreens market there could be several different avatars there could be parents who want to use the growing of plants indoors in the winter to teach their kids about gardening there could be people who just like a little something a little green in their house there could be people who are looking at the health and nutritional benefits of having live and fresh greens in the middle of the winter in their kitchen so you'll talk to each of those avatars a little bit differently. And when you're first starting out, you only want to choose one avatar. If you have parents on your list, you're going to talk to them differently about the fun project of growing things indoors with their children in the winter. You know, they're gonna be different than, the language you use is going to be different than you would use for the people who are growing the microgreens for the nutritional benefits. Those people you'll talk to about, you know, the contents in the soil, the minerals, the different vitamins that they'll get. You might even include a few recipes. So in this particular case, we've gone from gardening, which could be just about anybody who wants to get their hands dirty and see something grow, to people who wanna grow microgreens indoors in the winter, and they're doing it for the nutritional benefits. So there you've got your niche and your avatar. So I hope that that kind of clarifies a little bit why it's important to niche down and to know exactly who your avatar is. Because when you're writing your copy, it makes it so much easier if you know exactly who you're writing that copy to. And if you're struggling with this, it does also help to think about someone you've helped in your niche and your that is your avatar. Think about that one person and how you would talk to them if you were sitting down and having a cup of coffee. I even joke with some of my um, clients that they need to take a picture of someone that they've worked with and hang it above their computer. And when they're writing their copy, when they're, you know, whether it's a landing page or an email, they need to visualize that particular person so that the copy that they're writing speaks directly to them. You don't want to speak to everybody. Nobody wants to be one of a million people. Everyone on your list wants to feel like they're the only person on your list. And that only works if you know exactly 
who you're talking to. So visualize the people that you've worked with that you really, really enjoyed working with and figure out what they have in common. What, so if you're, if we go back to the microgreens, maybe before you just kind of sold your microgreen products to anybody who wanted microgreens, but then as you got to know your clients better, you probably know something that they all have in common. Maybe they're all parents. Maybe none of them are parents. Maybe they're all really into healthy eating. Maybe they're into, I don't know, something else. Maybe they're really into just having, like I said earlier, green things growing in their kitchen. Find out what they have in common, and those are the characteristics that you want to target when you're thinking about where your avatar hangs out and what they what they are enjoy and what they're interested in. One caution that I have for you is a lot of times people make the mistake of thinking that they are their avatar because they've come through a transformation. Maybe you came up with an eating plan that really helped you to lose weight and now you want to help other people by sharing that eating plan with them. You need to be careful about that because you are not your avatar. You are where you're... Where you were before you started the program is where your avatar is now. So you need to be able to go back and have a really beginner's mindset when you're trying to think about where you were when you started before you experienced the transformation that you have now. And that's a very difficult thing to do for a lot of people. So in many cases, it's easier to just say, you know what, I'm not my avatar, but I know that I can help other people who were in a similar situation to me and go out and seek those people, see what the characteristics are that they have in common, talk to them, see the language that they're using, listen to them, and then use the, those phrases and that language in all of the copy that you create. And when you're thinking about them, think about how the words that they're using and how they speak to you so that you can speak back to them in their own words. So that's just a little bit about niche and avatar. Sometimes I think we get too caught up in filling out paper and you know asking a bunch of questions. I honestly don't care what magazines my avatar reads it, most of the time or you know where they like to go out for dinner i teach people how to launch and so some of those questions just really aren't relevant to me so they do have a purpose if if the questions that you find on those worksheets that are talking to you about niche and avatar are relevant to something that you're doing in your marketing by all means dig deep, do the research and figure out the answers to those questions. But most of the time we don't have to get that deep and bogged down in these niche and avatar questions. Because if we just listen to our intuition and who we've worked with in the past and who we like working with, we can get there all by ourselves. Good luck with your niche and avatar work. If you have any questions, you can pop them in below. And again, I'm Tracy at launchtechmadeeasy.com.